the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Jesus Christ is our life and our light. In his name and in his power, let us worship God together. The Lord be with you, my sisters and brothers. Welcome. Thank you for being with me today. Let us begin and look to the Lord in prayer. All glory to you, great God, for the gift of your Son, who is the light and hope of the world. With all the angels of heaven, we praise your holy name, so that all people everywhere may believe, rejoice, and bow down, acknowledging your grace and your love. We confess we do not always follow the light of your word, or trust your good news to be good. We too often fail to praise your son's birth and we refuse peace on earth. Our expectations are small. God forgive our tepid faith and renew in us your grand vision of hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Hear the good news, my friends. God has caused light to shine in our hearts, the light that is the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Believe this gospel and live in its peace. And as we have peace with God, we have the wonderful privilege of having peace with one another, and gifting each other with God's peace. And so may the peace of Christ be with you, my friends. As we approach God's word today and hear a message from it, let's ask for the Spirit's help. Lead us, loving Spirit of God, into God's will. Make us a people who follow you in faith and patience. Give us now generous hearts to hear your word. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Today, I am going to read for you Psalm 148. Psalm 148. Hear the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
we are presently in the Christmas season. You might say, well, we just had Christmas. Yeah, on December 25th. We are actually in the third day of the 12 days of Christmas. Christmas is not just a day on the church calendar. It is a season. And this time uh, in the Christian year gives focus to declare along with the angels and all of God's creation. Glory to God in the highest. Praise the Lord. Everything in all creation points to a creator who cares for us. These days between December 25th and January 5th are to be a great celebration because King Jesus has come and is the rightful sovereign over all creation. We are to grasp the meaning of Christ's incarnation and affirm the identity of Jesus as both fully human and fully divine at the same time, all the time. Beginning with Christ's birth, we enter a reflection on the meaning of Christ's life and prepare for the journey toward the cross and the empty tomb that will be coming. Today, however, we simply praise the Lord along with all creation. And that's what the psalmist calls us to do. The entire universe is called to praise the Lord. Everything outside our earth is to give God glory. Everything in the universe points to a God who is worthy to be praised. Let's assume that the distance between the earth and the sun, which is 92 million miles, was reduced to the thickness of a uh, sheet of paper. <laughs> and if that's the case, then the distance between the earth and the nearest star would be a stack of papers 70 feet high. And the diameter of the galaxy would be a stack of papers 310 miles high. And our galaxy that we live in is just a speck of dust in the universe. And yet, Jesus holds the universe together by the word of his power. We serve a big, very big God who is worthy to be praised and honored, not only out there in the universe, but here on earth. And the psalmist calls on all the earth to echo the adoration of God. That means everything and everyone on earth, fish, animals, birds, even trees, as well as people, everything is to praise the Lord. Research in the field of bioacoustics has revealed that every day we are surrounded by millions of ultrasonic songs. Uh, for example, the electron shell of the carbon atom produces the same harmonic scale as a Gregorian chant. Whale songs can travel thousands of miles underwater. Meadow larks have a range of 300 notes. Supersensitive sound instruments have discovered that even earthworms make faint staccato sounds. Arnold Summerfield, a German physicist uh, and a pianist as well, has observed that a single hydrogen atom, which emits 100 frequencies, is more musical than a grand piano, which only emits 88 frequencies. Science writer Lewis Thomas summed it up this way. He said, if we had better hearing, and could discern the singing of seabirds, 
the rhythmic drumming of schools of mollocks, or even the distant harmonics of flies hanging over meadows in the sun, the combined sound might lift us off our feet. Praise the Lord. We have a vision in Psalm 148 of all creation, praising God as one great, big, immense, glorious choir. Praise is to occur with both words and actions. With words, we uh, praise is an expression of gratitude uh, to God for um, who he is and what he has done. With actions, praise is a posture of submission and acknowledgement of dependence upon the Lord. And so through the telling of our God stories, our spiritual stories, our testimonies, we declare to each other what God has done in our lives and how he is worthy to be praised and obeyed. With the emphasis on praise in a season dedicated to joy like Christmas, we also really do need to be sensitive and recognize that for many people, the holiday season is quite difficult. Loneliness, thin finances, unemployment, illness, strained relationships, bittersweet memories, the death of loved ones that have happened at this time of year in the past. All of that and more is a discouraging contrast to the celebration going on around them. And yet praise is not just for the joyful. Praise can happen no matter the circumstances because the Christian's happiness is not dependent on positive situations. It's dependent on the person and work of Jesus Christ. It may not be easy to find our voice of praise along with everyone else, but we are not alone. We can choose to join with all creation to praise the name of the Lord. A dear parishioner uh, shared the following with, uh, with me uh, during a Christ Christmas season several years ago. And this parishioner had, uh, had multiple surgeries and, and health encounters uh, in the year. And she said to me this, uh, wrote to me this, I am thankful for a chance to get out of the house today. Of course, my walker was with me. I am amazed how quickly folks move over, slow down and give me space when I am out with that thing. At church, it feels like I am parting the Red Sea. The reason I hate the walker is because it says to the whole world, hey, I'm broken. I realize we all have areas that we are broken. Most of them we can hide or cover up. Why are we so ashamed to confess the truth? Who really has it all together? I know we love our privacy and shun pity. However, I have been shown so much grace, kindness, and compassion as I push this piece of aluminum around that I hope this experience continues to change me for the better. I hope in the future I will be sensitive to those who are broken on the inside as well as on the outside. May the love of Christ give me eyes to see people as he does, precious and accepted, just as they are. That, my friends, is the reasonable and logical end of praising the Lord, to connect what God has done and is doing with what he can do through us as we glorify his name by simply 
being what we are created to be. We praise the Lord along with all creation. When we, as people in God's image, reflect that image in how we talk and in how we live, we participate with the universe in declaring God is good all the time. Praise is to be the glue that binds us together. And so let us praise the name of the Lord. To be more specific, let the church praise the Lord. Let leaders everywhere praise the Lord. Let healthcare workers praise the Lord. Let salespersons and factory workers praise the Lord. Let police and lawyers and judges praise the Lord. Let the trees, mountains, and all living things praise the Lord. Let engineers and educators praise the Lord. Let the little children praise the Lord. Let clerks and cashiers, waiters and waitresses, janitors and housekeepers praise the Lord. Let the lost and the lonely praise the Lord, along with the happy and the satisfied. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Whether you are bursting to proclaim it or you're struggling to say it and to live it, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord along with everything in the universe because we serve a God who keeps us close to heart. What do you have to praise the Lord for today? How do you express your praise, both personally and publicly? Where is your favorite place to praise the Lord? When does praise to God come easily for you? And when is it difficult? Who do you like praising the Lord with? May our lives become a peon of praise to the God who is worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. God Almighty, we praise your holy name. We thank you for your goodness. May you take the reading of this psalm and the proclamation of it, and may you fix praise firmly into both our minds and our hearts so that we are people that please you and bless others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our faith together. This is the Heidelberg Catechism, question and answer 36. Question. How does the holy conception and birth of Christ benefit you? Answer. He is our mediator, and with his innocence and perfect holiness, he removes from God's sight my sin, mine since I was conceived. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, we bow before the mystery of your incarnation. You have chosen weakness to confound the strong and poverty to send the rich away empty. We remember the millions in our world today who are hungry, who receive no hospitality, all with whom your son has become one by being in a manger. Loving God, our hearts are heavy with the sufferings of this world. We remember the many victims of political power and greed who have been used and abused. Lord Jesus, you placed yourself in the care of Mary to show to the world your desire to save. Give us grace to follow her example, to become instruments of your grace, servants of your will, channels of your love. Great God of peace, you fill our hearts with hope at every Christmas, for we remember again that this is the world you love. May hope, peace, 
and joy fill our hearts today and always. May we continually praise your blessed, holy, righteous, loving, and just name forever and ever through Jesus our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. It was a pleasure to praise the Lord. And let's keep the season and the party and the celebration going by continually praising the Lord. And as we depart our time together today, we go with God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my sisters and brothers. <laughs>